Modern Egyptians are not representative of the ancient Rem and Kimi. We know this from an analysis of the available evidence. The claim that they are is a classic white nationalist claim designed to separate African people from classical African civilizations. The Hermetic hypothesis of yesterday that gave Caucasian pastoralists credit for establishing civilization on the African continent has evolved into the so-called diverse white African hypothesis where the heavily mixed North African that resembles European and West Asian populations is allegedly a population that has existed as a constant in North Africa since ancient Paleolithic times. Genetically, this is 100% invalid. Modern Egyptians, as well as large swaths of North Africa, are derived from recent West Asian migrants, especially the descendants of the Arabs who participated in the Trans-Saharan Genocide and the enslavement of Africans within their caliphates. Many of these modern North Africans are the mixed descendants of ancient North Africans who were brutalized and raped by slavers from West Asia. The common claim that modern Egyptians are only 17% Arab is bogus and comes from the defunct National Geographic Genographic Project. Though this study has been largely scraped from the net, biases can be detected in its methodological separation of a Mediterranean component from so-called Sub-Saharan Africans. Without chronological considerations, both of these categories can mean anything, since there is evidence of both infra-Saharan and supra-Saharan variation on the continent from the ancient Iranian culture of North Africa to the Zulu people of contemporary Southern Africa. While modern Egyptians in particular, and North Africans in general, do have ancient African sex chromosomes, this doesn't automatically make them Africans. Sex chromosomes are only a tiny percentage of one's genome. Both Adolf Hitler and Napoleon had E1B1B, but no one would say that they aren't Europeans. Likewise, due to the rape of the Maafa, many Africans have sex chromosomes that trace them back to Europe. That doesn't mean that they aren't black. When it comes to autosomal analysis, modern Egyptians are over 70% Eurasian, which is indicative of invasions into Northeast Africa from the late period until now. This is in complete contrast with Dr. Shamar Kakeda's pop affiliator analysis of the 18th dynasty of ancient Kimi that shows an over 90% infra-Saharan African admixture of the individual sample. According to Dr. Kata, the cranial and line profiles of the Rem and Kimi clustered with infra-Saharan Africans prior to the 26th dynasty. Afterwards, Egyptians began to cluster in the middle and then closer to Eurasians as the land was invaded. When we study the history of Greek, Roman, Persian, Turkish, Arab, French, and British colonialism in Egypt, it is obvious that these foreign powers mix in with local populations and change the demographics of the land. According to Dr. Kata, the modern Egyptian population is not necessarily representative of the ancients. Cosmopolitan northern Egypt is less likely to have a population representative of the core indigenous population of the most ancient times. Outside influence and admixture with extra-regional groups primarily occurred in Lower Egypt, perhaps during the later dynastic, but especially in the Ptolemaic and Roman times. And that's from Dr. Joel Irish's analysis of dental morphology. The Nubians are more related to the ancient Egyptians than so-called modern Egyptians. Studies of cranial morphology also support the use of a Nubian Kerma population for comparison of the dynastic period, as this group is likely to be more closely genetically related to the early Nile Valley inhabitants than would be the late dynastic Egyptians, who likely experienced significant mixing with other Mediterranean populations. A craniometric study found that the Nakata and Kerma populations to be morphologically similar. And this is from Dr. Shamar Kakeda in 1990. Given these and other prior studies suggesting continuity and the lack of archaeological evidence of major migration or a population replacement during the Neolithic transition in the Nile Valley, we may cautiously interpret the dental health changes over time as primarily due to ecological subsistence and demographic changes experienced throughout the Nile Valley region. So modern Egyptians are a mixed population with European and Arab strands not identical to the ancients. Classical genetic studies show a high degree of genetic heterogeneity in the modern Egyptian population, suggesting that this population is descended from a mixture of African, Asian, and Arabian stock. Genetic heterogeneity within the Egyptian gene pool is also supported by more recent studies using autosomal STR markers. The bulk of genetic diversity in modern Egypt is a consequence of recent migrations and demographic events, mainly from Asia and Europe, evident in a higher migration rate of these speakers. So as we can see, it's clear that from the evidence available that modern Egyptians are absolutely not 
the direct descendant representative in their full totality of the ancient Egyptian populations. They are the descendants of the North Africans who were raped, brutalized, and mixed in to the incoming populations of invading Eurasians. It's obvious. Stop falling for the propaganda that's really designed to remove black people from autonomy and the usage of these classical African civilizations for a modern African renaissance. That's essentially what these geopolitical adversaries are trying to prevent. So they use these faulty arguments, but if we really examine the evidence, we could just cast them all aside.